Well, at the desk with us now is Johan Goos, and he'll be talking about uh, finding value in unit trusts and reviewing unit trusts. I think I'm right, uh, Johan, 65 if, or thereabouts. Right, yes. it was 50 yeah, years yeah. ago the unit trust industry started. Now you've got pages of them, mm. hundreds of mm. them literally mm. to choose from. A thousand. Yeah. A thousand. Mm. So let's have a look at uh, 2014 and how the industry did. Mm. Yeah, I think unit trust generally has just had a phenomenal run. And uh, 2014, again, it was a year of phenomenal growth for the industry. And uh, if you look at it from a returns perspective, then uh, a very interesting year. I think what we've seen uh, at the start of the year, it was the property sector that was really suffering and then it just came through so strong th through the rest of the year, really supported by a more positive outlook on inflation and then also interest rates. And while from an economic perspective there wasn't really great support there, I think the property sector with an average return of around about 24% in that sector has done really, really well. I think the best performing fund in that sector actually gave you a return of 39%. So followed uh, by that were from an asset class perspective was then really your local equities. But within that you had a, quite a divergence in terms of performance. You had the financial sector which was the best performing sector with about a return of also around about 23%. Uh, we, we know that the resources sector were really struggling during this year. And then obviously, you know, with the interest rate environment where we've been, uh, money market gave you, I think, just short of um, inflation. So you were in real terms, uh, you had a return of negative return of about 0.5%, while bonds gave you a return of around about 9%. If we look at it from a global perspective, you find very much the same kind of trend. So uh, offshore type of unit trust that's available for South African investors in this country, uh, you also find that the real estate sector was the best performing sector there. Uh, also with obviously the RAND uh, depreciation supporting that for a South African investor and then followed again by the global equity markets. And that is really the kind of trends that we've really seen uh, during 2014. Johan, David mentioned that there are pages and pages of these unit trusts and uh, one must always look at regulations that are coming into place in South Africa, especially with the retirement uh, reforms, wanting to simplify uh, instruments, uh, wanting to make it a lot easier, more accessible uh, for investors. How is this going to change the landscape of unit trusts? Are we going to be seeing more products coming on stream that are a lot simpler? I think I was, I've always been amazed by the number of funds that's available and the fact that every quarter when the statistics come out there's another 10 or 15 funds um, that has really come onto the list and you know if you get into a situation where you've got four times as many unit trusts as the number of stocks you can choose on your stock exchange you start wondering what are we really doing here. So I, I would really like to see a tightening up of, of the industry from that perspective. Uh, I think the whole issue around passive uh, type of investments will come through more and more uh, both from a, a cost uh, perspective as well as more from uh, you know, a, a regulatory perspective where they're looking for instruments that people can easily understand, they actually know what they're buying into. So I, I don't think you will see that uh, the number of funds will actually reduce. I think there will always be new funds coming onto, onto the market, but I think there should be tighter regulation around uh, the, the, you know, the kind of criteria for people to be able to put new funds on the market. Johan, now that it's easier than ever for individuals to buy equity, or to buy index linked uh, instruments and Satrix and things like that. Very easy, just log on, go in and you do it. And it's very often cheaper than a lot of what is offered by the industry. Has the industry adapted to this? Has it needed to adapt or do people still go back to the names they know, the brand names, big companies like yours and then go with that because it's yeah. comfortable? No, I think that is exactly the point. There is a lot of comfort, there's a lot of trust with the companies that is actually advertising the most. They're called you, unit trusts. And, and, <laughs> and you, you will find that uh, the, the people keep on going back to what they know. I think the whole issue around um, the active versus passive also very important here and that's why maybe you will find that your ETFs will still largely be supported by your institutional investors, mm. where your retail investor will still be going for an actively managed unit trust fund, a multi-asset class fund with a medium to low kind of equity exposure. That is what they've, that's what's been working for them over mm. the past couple of years. And those household names, the coronations, the Allen Grays, mm. those will still remain the, the but key But there's favorites. a paradox here, of course. The better you do, the less likely you might be to do the next time. So coronation, actually, I think it was coronation, had very good results. And they said, guys, we're not going to repeat this next year. Yeah. It's not, uh, you know, most companies say, yeah, we're looking forward to good year. They said, yeah, it's been a very good year. Be careful. We can't do this again. So there's a paradox. You mentioned the 39% in the property mm. sector. Mm. Is that the, sh the, the trust to get into or do you look mm. at the one at the bottom of the list? Yeah, well, no, I think it's for me to be more about the sector as a whole. 
<coughs> so obviously there were specific reasons. You, you had one fund um, that is available in South Africa that gave you a return of 46% and which, which was actually 100% invested in the Chinese stock market. Now you can't say that that will happen again. That fund will have a high level of volatility. And a fund like a property fund that can give you 39% will also have a high volatility, which means that you can have quite negative performance mm. if things don't turn out uh, so well for the property market. So I would still go with uh, more of to say, well, which asset class should you be in? and then maybe find the right asset manager that is the best in that asset class. Johan, it's the start of the new year. A lot of people have uh, New Year's resolutions, some being uh, to save more. Uh, on, the on, on the television, uh, radio, a lot of people are talking about uh, tips that <coughs> they need to take uh, when it comes to investing. Yeah. So can you perhaps maybe tell us very briefly what are perhaps maybe the quick steps to take for an investor who's never looked at unit trust before, if, if, or even if you are invested in unit trust, of what you can do now to, to position yourself better this year? I think the first thing, and that is the, the great thing about unit trust, it allows you to invest with a little investment like 300 to 500 rand a month uh, as a start. And uh, the idea there for me is just to start with that. It's a habit that you need to basically get into. And uh, if that money goes out of your account, if it's a debit order or something like that, after a while you don't even know. You know that that money is not going to be there to be spent. So that's the first thing. For other people that's a little bit more established and that's got specific goals they want to try and achieve, like for instance retirement, I would say the, the side on what is your time frame. Look at the most appropriate combination of asset classes that will help you to achieve your real return objectives because you've got to think about inflation the whole time. Expect inflation to be 5.3% average. You need to at least outgrow um, the, the inflation number to keep your money, uh, the purchasing power of your money. And then once you've got that goal, um, the idea would be to stick with that time frame that you've got. And whenever something happens in the market, don't have an emotional reaction. Make short-term decisions that will hurt you in the long run. And those are really the key things for me. Well, that was Johan Goos' uh, advice at the beginning of the year, thinking about unit trusts. He is head of multi-management at Absa.